Uh, good morning once again. Today, let's have a brief review first of what we have discussed so far as far as multiple linear regression is concerned. So we are using the wage data set. Okay, let's see if, uh, okay, let me access this again. The wage data set consisting of several quantitative variables and a few categorical variables, which we can use as factors. So we have education, experience, tenure, uh, the number of dependents and hourly wage. So initially, if you recall guys, we first uh, uh, obtained the correlation among the variables and we saw that the, the variable that had the highest correlation with hourly wage was education. So theoretically, if we're just going to do a simple linear regression, education would be the best predictor for hourly wage. Theoretically, guys, if we're just using a simple linear regression. But the reality is uh, it's, uh, it's really difficult to predict or to explain a variable uh, just using one variable. So that's the concept of multiple linear regression where we use several independent variables, several predictor variables in order to explain our variable of interest. In this case, this is hourly wage. This is actual data, guys. I think 1970s the data to. Okay, so a survey was conducted among several uh, people, among employees. Okay, they uh, recorded their number of years of education, number of years of experience, tenure in the company, then the race, gender, civil status, and number of dependents. And the objective was to try to predict or to explain the relationship among this, these variables, quantitative and uh, categorical with hourly wage. So that's what we have been doing so far. Okay, so last time we, we said that <clears throat> we have to convert <coughs> the, uh, the categorical variables, the race, gender, civil status as factors before we can use them for regression. <clears throat> okay, we cannot, uh, we cannot use them for regression unless they are categorical variables. So let's, let's see the structure for wage. So let me just run that. <clears throat> so it's here, it's already race, gender, civil status, they're already factors, which means that we have uh, the what we have done last Monday was already saved here. Okay, so I will not run this again, guys. I will not run this again since we have done that last time. Okay, and then let's just come up with a uh, correlation correlation among the uh, uh, quantitative variables. We cannot do correlation among uh, with with factors or. Okay, so here you can see yung race, yung gender, race, gender, civil status. They don't mean anything because these are, uh, these are categorical variables. So what we're just going to do is to get the correlation among the quantitative variables. So we ex exclude here. <clears throat> we're using the psych package and then the function pairs that finals. The data is wage. However, we're going to subset. We're going to remove four to six. If uh, we recall four to six guys, one, two, three, four, five, six are columns for the race, gender, and civil status. Okay, so we remove them. And if we run this, this is what we're going to get. So let me just rerun this. Okay, so we can see here the correlation between <clears throat> your quantitative variables, for example, education and experience, it's negative 0.3. They're negatively, negatively correlated. Education with early wage is 0.41, that's the highest. We want your dependent, dependent variable to be highly correlated with your independent variable. If you can see here, number of dependents, that's negative 0.05. Uh, it's a uh, practically almost no correlation at all. <clears throat> so chances are, guys, when we model this, 
you, you can guess, guys, that among these independent variables, this might be one of those insignificant variables. Okay, so you can see here a correlation plot together with the, uh, uh, the scatter plot among the different variables. Okay, you can see here the, uh, this is the plot of our education early wage. Okay, now what we did last time was to create a model, a linear model. So our model two is LM linear model where we regress early wage on education, experience, tenure, race, gender, civil status, number of dependents, and we define the data to be equal to wage. Notice that we can include race, gender, and civil status, okay, even if they're categorical variables. Uh, for as long as, as, as far as our R is concerned, we have, we have uh, converted this into factors. Okay, uh, by factor, what do you mean? By factor, what we mean is that R is going to dummify these variables. Pag sinabing dummify, guys, iko convert niya into a one or a zero. Okay, so that's what we mean by dummify. So how, how does R do that? If you get the summary of wage, get the summary of wage. Okay, we can see here that race consists of two, uh, two factors, non-white and white. So what R will do is that it will, uh, it will uh, make this yung non-white as your reference variable, the the one that appears uh, that appears first as uh, as uh, alphabetically, no? So non-white to, okay. So same gagawing reference variable or benchmark variable. Ibig sabihin, guys, ang benchmark or reference, ano mangyayari? So, for example, here, okay, let me just stop this. Baba ko to. Okay. You recall, guys, what will happen if we dummify? So, itong race na to, okay, papalitan niya to, no? Anong gagawin niya dito, guys? Papalitan niya ng 1 or 0. Sino yung magiging 0? Sino yung magiging 1? Do you remember, guys? Anyone, please? It will dummify. No? It will dummify niya. Pag sinabing dummify, mag-introduce. Sorry, ah, dummy. Dummify. Pag sinabing dummify, guys, it means that it will introduce uh, it will convert these variables into zero or one. Okay? So, kung iisa lang siya, guys, kung dadalawa yung levels ng factors, then isang dummy variable lang ilalagay because it's always n minus k. Yung k is the number of factors. Since si race, dalawa yung factors niya, dalawa yung factors ni race, so that means isa lang yung dummy variable na to. Kasi one or zero lang naman eh. So, ang tanong, sino yung gagawin niyang Sino yung gagawin niyang ano, zero, guys? Sino yung gagawin niyang benchmark? Anyone? Hello? I think we discussed this last time. Uh, ito. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Angel. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mark. No? Pero guys, ang gagawin niyang zero is the, di ba, yung alphabetically na mauuna. So si non-white. Gagawin niyang zero. Yan ang gagawin natin benchmark no? or reference variable. So this would be converted into uh, uh, one, one, etc. Tapos yung non-white zero. Okay, ganun ba guys? Clarification, guys. Tama? Okay. All right. Okay, clear yung guys, ha? Kung sino, guys, yung ira-reference variable, siya yung gagawing, ano, gagawing zero, no? 
So the rest will be one. Okay. So paano guys kung ano kung kung tatlong factors? Kung tatlong factors guys. Kunyari year level, apat nga 'yon, ano? Year level crush. So we have uh, sophomore, SO kunyari and then junior and then senior s ilang dami variables ang gagawin dito guys pag four levels anyone okay correct tatlo no so magkaka tatlong dami variables dito no so for example uh Sino yung mag appear dito as ano as uh, as first si Frosh no so ito yung gagawin yang benchmark or reference okay so walang ano walang magiging dummy variable for Frosh ang mangyayari dito sophomore binary sophomore and then junior and then senior tatlo no tatlo so lahat guys ng kunyari may mga dito ano college level kunyari Lahat ng sophomore di, uh, sa college level, magiging one siya. One. Lahat one. Tapos the rest will be zero. Pag junior naman, dito siya magiging one. Kunyari may mga junior doon. Yan, junior yan. Okay. So the rest here will be zero. Senior naman, magiging one siya dito. Kung saan may senior, may one siya doon. The rest will be zero. E pa, paano ngayon guys si ano, siya Prosh? Paano natin malalaman kung frosh? Anyone? Sa tingin nyo guys, kasi tatlo yung dami variables niyan. Isa para kay sophomore, isa para kay junior, isa para kay senior. So paano si, ano, si, si frosh? Paano maa-account si frosh? Anyone? Okay, kunyari. Uh, frosh, not frosh. So, ano ilalagay mo kay sophomore? Guys, frosh kunyari ito ha. Observation number 8 kunyari. Frosh yan. Ano papasok kay sophomore? Anong ano to? Anong value? Hello, guys. Frosh siya, frosh. So under sophomore, ano siya? Hello? Sophomore, hindi. Zero siya. Diba? Kasi ito, ito ha, ulit ha. Ito, ulit yung example ko. No? Dito, kunyari may, ano tayo dito, may, may factor na year level. So si person number eight, cross siya, cross. So ang tanong ko kasi, paano malalaman ng model na Frost yun? So si Frost guys, ang mangyayari sa kanya, under sophomore, zero siya. Under junior, zero siya. Under senior, zero siya. Di ba? So pag tatlong senior siya at tatlong zero yan, ibig sabihin uh, Frost yan. Okay, clear yun guys. Kaya nga tatlong ano lang, tatlong dami variables lang. Okay. Kasi pag maglagay pa tayo dito guys ng another ano, another dummy variable na frosh, so pag may ganyan, di ba? So dito magiging one siya. No? Uh, we will fall in a trap called dummy variable trap. No? Magkakaroon ng ano yan, perfect correlation yan among the among the variables. No? So hindi pa pwede yan. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll discuss the, the uh, ramifications of that guys kung apat na dummy variable ang ang ilagay natin, no? Pero ang question guys ulit, no? Ah, uh, pwede ba? Pwede bang apat na dummy variables? Yes. Pwede ang apat na dummy variables, pero pag nag-model ka, huwag mo na isasama yung intercept. Okay, let me show this again. Stop. Okay, di ba yung model natin to? Ito, di ba? Ayan o, LM, early wage, education, experience, tenure, etc. Plus number of dependents. And then magma-minus 1 tayo dito. Minus 1. 
Ibig sabihin ng minus 1 guys, do not include the intercept. So, pag nag pag nagdagdag tayo guys ng dami variables na which covers all your factors. So, kunyari yung year level natin, ang gawin natin dami variables apat, no? Isama natin si Pros. So, pwede 'yon for as long as hindi na natin ipapa ipapa-compute si intercept. Magma-minus 1 ta tayo dito. Kasi pag nag-minus 1 tayo dito, ibig sabihin nun, do not compute for the intercept. Ah, sorry. Do not compute for the yeah, intercept pala. Tama. Do not compute for the intercept. Okay. Pause muna ako, guys. Clear so far. <clears throat> e, repeat ko lang. Dapat alam natin to, da Guys, uh, dapat naintindihan natin to. Pag may factors tayo, pwede natin isama siya sa regression model. What the software will do is to dummify the factors. It will be replaced by ones and zeros, no? So pwede 'yun kasi para may ano na siya, may uh, may numerical numerical value na siya. <clears throat> Binary nga lang, no? So what happens is that yung number of dummy variables will be equivalent to <coughs> the number of factors minus minus ano minus 1. <clears throat> So in our case, lahat <clears throat> tagal tagalawala yung factors natin, tagalawala yung levels natin eh. So for race, how many how many dummy variables will be introduced? Just one. For gender, just one. For civil status, just one. So tigi isa lang yung dummy variables sila kasi tagalawala yung factors sila. Okay? If you have four dummy variables, four factors, four sorry a factor that has four levels, then it will introduce three dummy variables. Okay? Okay, R, ang ginagawa niya, yung ginagawa niyang reference or yung benchmark <clears throat> is that level that, uh, uh, that, that is alphabet, yung alphabetically uh, uh, appears first. No? Okay. Okay, good. Okay, I hope it's clear so far, no? So, i clear ko lang po lahat. Okay, so let's now go back to our regression model. So, dito guys, gina ginawa na natin yung ano, no? Ginawa na natin yung, ito yung, ito yung multiple linear regression. Now, if you're going to include all the independent variables from your data, you can write this, no? Okay, dito. Ito yan, no? So, LM, early wage, still day, and then that. Yan. Yung that dyan, guys, ibig sabihin lahat ng mga variables. So, this is a uh, quick way to write your model if you're going to include all your variables. <clears throat> Personally, I prefer writing. Except siguro kung napakarami na talaga. No? Okay, so let's run this. When we put parentheses here, it will, it will give us the initial initial uh, results no? run natin okay so binigay sa atin yung values lang ng ano ng mga ano ng mga parameters natin okay so first it calls the formula and then ito yung intercept yung b sub 0 ito yung b sub 1 b sub 2 b sub 3 b sub 4 b sub 5 so these are just the values of your slopes no? of your parameters we don't know guys kung significant siya hindi Paano natin malalaman, guys, kung significant? Okay, before we, before we get the summary, guys, tinan muna natin, ano yung object ng mod 2 na to? I think we did this last time. So, mod 2, uh, ang class niya, it's an LM model. Tapos, ang mga laman niya, ito. No? So, if you take a look at mod 2 sa global natin environment, it's a list. Okay, remember a list, guys, it's... Uh, uh, it contains several types of uh, of variables, spreading of data structure, spreading. Uh, it can be another list. It can be a vector, etc. Kina natin to. Yeah, this is a vector of coefficients, okay, etc. So different <clears throat> different elements. Yung mod to natin, which is an uh, which is an LM LM uh, class, no. Okay, so let's now summarize this. Okay, so here we can see, guys, yung, 
yung model natin. Ito yung regression output natin. So let's let's once again uh, quickly interpret this. So this stars here, this stars and this dot represent yung yung ano kung saan siya significant, no? At what level? So three stars here means that it's significant at ito point three stars significant at point zero zero one. So you notice that your p-value ranges from zero between zero and one. Okay, so kapag uh, less than 0 0.001 siya, in this case, ito yun. So we say that uh, ang, it's denoted by three stars, which means that this is significant at the 0.1% level of significance. So uh, these uh, three variables, three independent variables, okay, this one, this one, and this one, they're all significant at 0 0.001. Itong experience, that lang siya, ibig sabihin, significant at 0.1. Okay? If we're going to use the standard 5% level of significance, okay, so ito yung alpha natin, 5%, it means that this one experience is not significant. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So, ano ibig sabihin itong education na to? Okay, education, this is the slope of uh, of education, no? Ibig sabihin noon, for every one unit, okay, let me write that, guys. Okay, for every one unit. Kasi yung unit dito, guys, one unit one unit of what? One unit of what, guys? Unang-una, ano yung unit natin? It refers to education, di ba? So education is in years. So you can say say here, for every one year. No? So pwedeng diretso, for every one year, increase. Increase. In education, there's a sorry, just spelling a corresponding increase in early wage. Our, let me use the end. There's a corresponding increase. Uh, there is, there's a corresponding, kulang to, uh, 57, 0.57 dollars or 57 cents increase in early wage. And then don't forget this one. Tama, Keteris Paribus. Or all things being the same. Okay, so let's quickly, uh, once again, revisit this. Anong ibig sabihin ito, guys? Itong slope na to, itong 0.57 na to, which is significant, no? It's significant, which means that it is a value other than zero, okay? We have uh, this uh, uh, confidence that the, the uh, slope for education is not equal to zero. Okay, so ano siya? 0.57. Anong ibig sabihin ng 0.57 na yan? Sa bawat isang taon na mag increase education, there's a corresponding 0.57 dollars increase in early wage, Keteris Paribus. The meaning of Keteris Paribus is that, okay, all things being the same. What does all things being the same mean? Ibig sabihin, hindi natin papa-increase experience, tenure, race, white, race, gender, civil status, and number of dependents. They will be the same. No? Hindi sila magbabago, hindi natin sila dadagdagan. Ang dadagdagan lang natin ng isa is education. Corollarily, guys, ibig sabihin nun, okay? Uh, thank you, Angel. Tama. Corollarily, ibig sabihin nito, guys, for every one year decrease in education, there's a corresponding $0.57 decrease in early wage keteris paribus. Okay? So let's go now to tenure. Ano ibig sabihin ng tenure? Uh, statistically significant din siya, no? 
for every one year increase in tenure, there's a corresponding 0.138 dollars increase in hourly wage ceteris paribus. <coughs> okay? Ganun din guys si ano, uh, okay. Now, ito ang tricky guys, no? Ito mga factors natin. How is this interpreted? Uh, could you kindly chat guys kung na uh, have we have we interpreted this last meeting? Yes or no nga please, guys? Did we interpret the factors? Yes or no, please? Leap? Uh, leap, di ba Tuesday? Okay, I thought leap was Tuesday. Pero Monday yung class natin. Oo, pero Monday yung class natin. Ha, diba? Okay, anyway. So guys, uh, those of you who were here, guys, na-discuss ba natin tong ano? Tong... Oh, we did not. Oh. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Oh, hindi nga. Pero I, I was waiting for your response, guys. So, sige, discuss na natin to. Ano ibig sabihin tong tingnan niyo, guys, the way R puts the output is that race white, no? Gender male, civil status single. Ano to mga to, no? Ano to mga to? Ito yung mga hindi reference, ba? So dito race white Reminder sa atin yan that this should be interpreted in the light of, in reference to the benchmark. Okay, so Ray, sino yung benchmark natin? Sino yung reference natin, guys? Can you chat, please? So Ray, sino yung benchmark natin? Oh, that's very easy, guys. So Ray, sino yung benchmark? Okay. Uh, medyo parang mabagal guys yung response natin. And I'm only getting a very few responses. One, two. Uh, I don't know if the others are listening or if the others uh, do understand my question. Okay, you're correct, non-white. Okay, thank you so much for the responses, guys. Okay, so more responses, please, guys. Matatapos na yung term. Sana yung mga remaining days natin mas active na kayo sa mga. Okay, you're correct, non-white. So how do we interpret this? Okay. Uh, first, guys, it's not ano, ano, it's not significant. So actually, it's pointless to interpret this. However, let's assume, guys, guys, for purposes of discussion, let's assume that this is significant. So what does this mean? Okay. It means that, so let's go dito, ah. Okay. Okay. On the average... Okay. White people, or white employees, received uh, that zero point one oh nine. Okay, one one alam no? just to ano? One one dollars early wage greater than their non-white counterparts. Okay, Keteris Paribus. Okay, so you always interpret, guys, yung mga factors in light of the benchmark variable. So this is a rel relative measure, no? 0.11. Ibig sabihin nito, on the average, white employees receive 0.11 dollars 0.11 dollars more than their non-white counterparts keteris paribus okay how about this guys itong gender on the average 
male employees receive $1.76 more than their female counterparts, Kateris Paribus. <clears throat> and then this one, on the average, single employees receive $0.46 less than their married counterparts, Kateris Paribus. Okay? Okay. Pause muna ko. Clear ba yung guys? Clear yung interpretation yun? So, pag nakakamit kayo ng factor variables, guys, tapos generate na output, you should be able to explain or to interpret. <coughs> yung ibig sabihin nun. Okay. Claro ba so far? Okay. Good. Good. Thank you so much. So, ganun guys, in-interpret yung mga factors. Unlike uh, yung mga dummy variables na to, unlike yung mga yung ano natin, yung yung mga quantitative variables. So, assuming that number of depend number dependence is significant, then hindi kasi significant siya, no? So, ano mangyayari dito? Uh, on the average, okay, Okay, dapat din may on the average son. pero okay lang sige for every one uh, one uh, number of dependents is number of child no for every increase one or one unit lang one unit increase in the number of dependents there's a corresponding 0.15 dollars increase in hourly wage kateris paribus so that would have been interpreted that way kaso nga lang guys hindi siya significant. So technically guys, ang papasok lang sa model natin, ito, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? Si intercept guys, kahit hindi significant yan, pinapasok pa rin natin yan. Okay, ano yung ibig sabihin itong intercept guys? What's the meaning of this? Negative 3.38. Although it does not have any pragmatic or practical uh, meaning, but we still interpret that no? for, for the purpose of regression. So, anong ibig sabihin ng negative 3.389? Anyone? Remember, the intercept, guys, is the value of your hourly wage when all your independent variables are equal to zero. So, pag zero out nyo sila, guys, ibig sabihin, yung negative 3.39 dollars na yan, yan na ang hourly wage. No? Okay, although, sabi nga natin, uh, it doesn't make sense to have a negative hourly wage kasi ibig sabihin ba nun yung empleyado yung magbabaya dun sa company? But we still use that for predictive purposes. No? Pag, pag nag-pre-prediction tayo, kailangan pa rin intercept. Whether it's significant or not. Okay. How do we interpret this? Okay, sabihin ko ah, so, itong negative $3.39, this is the hourly wage of an employee who does not have any education. Years of education is zero. Walang years of experience. Okay? Walang years of tenure. Who is non-white, who is female, and who is married, and who does not have any dependents. Let me repeat that, guys. The, the intercept here, which is negative $3.39, is the hourly wage of an employee who does who has zero years of education, zero, zero years of experience, zero years of tenure, zero, zero number of dependents, who is non-white, who is female, and who is married. Okay. Bakit naging ganun, guys? <clears throat> Remember the value of the intercept is the value of your dependent variable, in this case, hourly wage, when all your independent variables are zero. So, naintindihan natin education, zero, experience, zero, tenure, zero, number of dependents, zero. Pero yung race, guys, race, ano ibig sabihin kung race is zero? Okay, sino yun? Hello? Sino yun, guys, pag race is equal to zero? Naalala yung ginawa natin kanina, yung, yung drawing natin. 
yung in-illustrate ko, guys. Ano ibig sabihin ng race is equal to zero? Anyone would like to volunteer to explain? Chat or unmute, please. Okay. May nag uh, chat. All right. Uh, Mary, could you unmute yourself? Let's pocket explain, please. Uh, sir, if the parang observation is falls under, if the person is non-white, magiging negative 3.3 yung wage niya. Mm -mm. Tama po ba? Uh, yes. Kasi di ba naalala nyo? Thank you, thank you, Mary. That's correct, no? Di ba yung factor, guys, yung factor variable, dinadami pa natin yan, di ba? So si race, white or non-white yan eh. Tapos sabi natin, di ba, si, si R, ang default niya, Kung sino man yung alphabetically na uuna, yun ang gagawin niyang reference, yun ang gagawin niyang benchmark. Yun, yun ang gagawin niyang zero. Diba? Right? So pag nag na tayo, ibig sabihin, magkakaroon ng isang variable na zero or ones lang. Si non-white doon, zero. Si white ang one. Therefore, ano ibig sabihin kapag race is equal to zero? Eh diba, non-white yun, diba? Kasi yun ang ginag ginagawa ni R pag nagdadami pa siya. Ginagawa niyang reference yung uh, that factor that appears first. No? That, yung level ng factor that appears first. Okay, ganun din dito si gender. Si gender, ang ginawa niyang benchmark, ang ginawa niyang reference, o ang ginawa niyang zero is female. Okay, so pag tanunong tayo na ano ba yung race na equal to zero, non-white yun. Ano ba yung gender na equal to zero? Then female yun. Ano ba yung civil status na equal to zero? Demerit yun. So pag ininterpreta natin ito lahat, itong mga factors na to, okay? itong mga factors na to, yung race, gender, civil status, and when we're interpreting the, you know, the intercept, so di ba lahat yan gagawin natin zero? So for the last time guys, ang ibig sabihin ng intercept in this case, which is negative 3.39, that's the average hourly wage of an employee who does not have any education, no experience, no tenure, no number of dependents, who is non-white, who is female, and who is married. Yun ang ibig sabihin niya. Okay? Clear ba, class? Clear? Okay, good. Isa lang yung clear Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, good. So we learned how to interpret dummy variables. Kahit anong, kahit anong software ang gagamitin, guys, ganyan yung pag-ano, ganyan yung pag-interpret. Now, depende din sa software, kasi baka yung ibang software, iba yung ano nila, iba yung process nila ng pag-dummy-fy. No? Uh, pwede ba natin baguhin yung ano, yung, yung, yung default ni R na gagawin niyang zero yung ano, yung, yung, uh, yung alphabetically na nauuna. Yes, pwede. Pwede i -re level natin. But let's do that next time na lang. Uh, we have a lot to cover muna. So we go here, guys. Yeah, yung mga residual natin. Importante ito, no? Residual standard error is 2.95. Okay? Sa so, nanggaling tong 518 degrees of freedom na to? Okay, remember, guys, ano yung formula ng deg degrees of freedom natin? So that's N minus k minus 1. Ilan ba n natin? How many observations do we have, guys? Ilan, guys, yung observations natin? Ilan? Answer, please, guys. How many observations do we have? Okay, chat please. For the wage data, ilang observations natin? What is our sample size? Ayan, thank you. Thank you, Jonas. 526. Okay. So 526. No? N. Ito yung N natin, no? Minus, ilan yung K natin? Ilan yung predictors natin? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, minus 7. No? And then, minus 1 to 
compensate for the degree of freedom lost for computing for the intercept. Dun ang galing yung minus 1 na yan. Kasi we lose also 1 degree of freedom because we also compute for the intercept. So degree of freedom natin 518. No? Okay, 518. Okay, ano yung adjusted R squared natin? 36.19. Ano ibig sabihin ng 36.19? It means, guys, that Ibig sabihin 36.19? Anyone? A 36.19% of the variability of our dependent variable hourly wage can be explained by our model. Yung model natin na including seven independent variables. So 36.19% ng variability niya. E paano yung mga 63% plus? Well, it can be explained by other variables. No? Pero dito, 36.19% lang. Okay, uh, konting review tayo. Ah. Okay, remember guys na, di ba nag-simple linear regression muna tayo? Okay, remove ko lang yung mga clear all muna. Hmm. Ba't hindi nag-clear all? Clear? All good. Okay. Let's just compare, guys. Dito yung unang model natin, yung model 1 natin. Where's our model 1? Here. Summary natin model 1. Okay. Uh, oops. Ay, I'm sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, ah. Nag, nag, ano na, nag uh, combine na yung ARIMA model ng isang subject ko. Okay, sorry about this. Uh, ito guys yung magiging lesson yung next, next term. As, summer pala, mag-o-offer yata ng summer ng arts. Uh, siguro, I'd like to know who among you will uh, be joining us for arts. I'll be, the, uh, I'll be your mentor uh, if you're going to join yung summer ng arts ng Finstar. Pero medyo maano, no? Kasi... Three, three hours per day, three days a week, six, six weeks siya. Okay, so let me run this again kasi nag, nag, uh, iba na yung model 1 po. No? Model 1, okay, and then summary ng model 1. Okay, ito yung unang natin guys, yung simple linear regression natin. Rinegress natin sa early wage on education. And it's a significant predictor. Yan. Okay, 0.54 yung slope niya. Al almost the same dun sa... So, ano natin kanina, which is, ano kanina? 0.57, no? Ito 0.54. And then, ito yung, ano? Ito yung glaringly different, guys. Ang adjusted R squared niya is 16% lang. So, ibig sabihin, itong model na to, where we're using only education, okay, can only explain 16.32% of the variability of our uh, dependent variable hourly wage. Compare, contrast that with this one. So, mas malaki guys yung ano. Mas malaki yung ano natin, yung, yung predictive power ng, ano, ng model 2 natin where we're using seven variables although they're not all significant. Okay? Okay. Uh, ano ibig sabihin ito guys? Yung F statistics that's used for what? For, ano tinitest dyan, guys? Ano tinitest dyan yung overall goodness of fit? Test. Overall goodness of fit test. So this is actually an ANOVA, analysis of variance. variance. Okay, so ang null hypothesis natin yan, guys, is Beta null is equal to beta 1 is equal to beta 2 that 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 is equal to beta 7. Okay, that's our null hypothesis. And what's our inference? What's our interpretation? What's our analysis of that? P-value of this uh, ANOVA, F-STAT 43.54. Pag ANOVA, guys, dalawang degrees of freedom. Number one, itong K, no? Itong K, yung number of predictors. And number two, degree of freedom two is N minus K minus one. Okay, so you need these two in order to compute for the F statistics. And you need the F statistics in order to compute for the P-value. 
So yung p-value natin is less than 0 0.05. In fact, this is three stars, no? Less than 0 0.001. Okay, so we reject this null hypothesis. Ibig sabihin nun, guys, na uh, there's a uh, uh, strong probability that at least one of these is not equal to zero. Kasi sa overall goodness of t-test, ang tinetest natin, lahat ng mga predictors natin equal to zero. Okay. All right. So let's go here next. Other important measures. Okay, medyo na iba dito. Ano? Okay, pakidagdag na lang to guys. No? Okay, we're going to compare model 1, yung simple linear regression, at saka model 2, yung multiple linear regression natin. We're going to use a measure called, called Akaiki information criterion and Bayesian information criterion. Okay, ito guys are measures of information loss. No? information loss to, yung AIC at saka BIC. Ginagamit natin to kung magko-compare tayo ng mga models. So, as it is guys, kunwari, compute natin si AIC at saka BIC ni Model 1. Control Enter. So, the Akaiki Information Criterion of Model 1, yung simple linear regression is 277. Uh, 2777. No? But it has no meaning at all. <clears throat> <laughs> unless we compare it with other models. So let's see. Let's run everything here. Okay. We can see here that Akaiki for model 1 is 2777. For model 2, Akaiki is 2640. So which is better? Model 1 or model 2? Okay. In using Akaiki, guys, the rule is the smaller, the better. Kasi ibig sabihin nun, lesser information loss. No? So 277 is greater than 2640. So based on Akaiki, model 2 is better than model 1. Ganun din kay, ano, kay Bayesian information criterion. Okay, Bayesian, i-spell ko lang yun. Bayesian info criterion. Which is your BIC. Bayesian information criterion. Yan. All right. So, klaro yung guys? Klaro ba? Na we can use the AIC as a benchmark to determine whether we should use the multiple linear regression in model 2 vis-a-vis <clears throat> the model 1, which is a simple linear regression. Turns out that both in terms of AIC and BIC, Model 2 is far superior than Model 1. Okay, sometimes guys, lalo na kung medyo mga close yung mga model, uh, it would be best to use another method in order to compare which model is better. Okay, so we can use the ANOVA, Analysis of Variance Method. Okay, so ito, so di ba may dalawang ano tayo, may dalawang models na, models 1 and models 2. No? So what we're going to use is the ANOVA and then i-compare natin si model 1 and model 2. So if we run this, <coughs> okay, so sabi that natin sa, that sa atin dito, model 1 is early wage regression education, model 2 is this one. Okay. Now, may pangalan to, no? May pangalan si Model 1 in relation to Model 2. So, ang pangalan ni Model 1 is Mod 1. So, ito lang dito. Mod 1 is your restricted model. Okay. And of course, Mod 2 is your unrestricted Okay, so si model 1, restricted. Bakit siya si restricted? Fewer, no? Mas konti lang yung predictors niya. Kaya restricted yun. Ibig sabihin, uh, 
we're trying to minimize the number of predictors. So this is your restricted model. This is your unrestricted model. Okay. And the null hypothesis for this uh, statistical test on ANOVA natin is that the restricted model is better. So yung fewer na variables is better than your uh, unrestricted model, which has several or more, more independent variables. <laughs> so what we have here is your p-value. So if yung titignan natin, ang f-stat natin is 28.208. Okay, and then our p-value is, uh, it's uh, point, uh, point and then 15 zeros and then 2, 2. So that's practically zero, no? So that's less than 0 0.05, definitely. Okay, and since it's, uh, it's less than 0 0.05, our conclusion is that we reject the null hypothesis that they are that the restricted model is better. Okay, take note, guys. Ang ano natin ang null hypothesis mas maganda si restricted, mas maganda si model one. But okay, anong answer nito? We reject. No, sorry. Ang sabi kaya to we fail. No, we reject the null hypothesis that the restricted model is better. Okay, so. We were able to show using Akaike and using uh, ANOVA analysis of variance test that indeed model two is better. Okay, post muna ako. Clear ba so far, guys? When we're comparing two models, anin pwedeng gamitin? AIC nila and BIC. The smaller, the better. Or you can directly also use the analysis of variance where the null hypothesis is that the restricted model is better. Or you must counting via depend independent variables is better. Okay, thank you. All right. So, uh, tapos sabi model natin. Mas maganda daw tong two. Ibig sabi niya banyan guys. Uh, ang model natin is uh, hourly wage is equal to the intercept plus uh, this slope times uh, experience plus 0.138 times tenure plus. Uh, uh, 1.76 times gender, tapos wala na, plus error term. Is that our model? No, guys, no. Kapag multiple linear regression, guys, we don't stop there. We have, uh, we can, uh, it's always advisable to to do what we call a stepwise regression. I think stepwise regression. Stepwise regression, guys, step by step siya until you reach the final model until all the variables are significant. Okay? So, tingnan natin yung, natin, yung model 2. Okay, so, uh, paano to guys? Paano to? So, stepwise regression, mag-iisa-isa tayong magtatanggal ng mga variables. By the way, uh, there, there are different types of stepwise regression. And the one that we're going to use here is the backward step, stepwise regression. And in backward stepwise regression, we model everything first. Gagamitin natin lahat ng mga independent variables. And then, isa-isa natin tatanggalin. Okay, so ano guys yung unang tatanggalin natin dito? Uh, by the way, guys, very quick. Uh, explanation lang. Paano nakuha yung p-value na to? Paano nakuha yung p-value na to, guys? Yung p-stat na to? It's your estimate divided by the standard error. And then, paano mal uh, if we're just going to use the p, guys, paano natin malalaman na significant po hindi? So, this is from your stat. No? We can compute for the p-critical, no? How do we compute for the t critical value? Okay, ang t critical natin, we can use the quick the q function in R. Let me just illustrate with q and then t value and t stat. Q, t stat. And then, uh, kasi ano to, no? Uh, ang ano natin dito is if we draw this just as a brief recollection of stat. Ito yung t distribution natin, sorry, ah. 
So, ang 5%, ano natin? Diba? How do you compute this? Pag 5% level of confidence natin, 5%. So, ibig sabihin yan, yun nasa gitna, 95%. No? 95% to. Ito 2.5. Ito 2.5. 95%. 2.5, 2 2.5. So, we would like to, let's just cal calculate one part of the, ano, Ang ano natin, ang, this will be, okay, ilang percent to? From the end up to here. So this is 97.5%, di ba? Yung nagagamitin natin na ano, na, na, uh, area, no? 97.5, from, from dito sa dulo, hanggang, hanggang dito, no? We'll just choose one kasi two-tailed naman to. So, let me compute that. Let me just show to you. We use the function Q, P. No? Kasi T stat. Pag normal siya, Q norm. Okay, so we use the uh, point uh, 975. Okay, and then we need to define our degree of freedom is equal to um, 529 natin. Minus k natin is 7, minus 1. No? So that's that's actually yung 518 natin. Okay, so we're, we'll be able to compute for the critical value. Okay. Ano tong 1.98, guys? Ano tong 1.96? Balik tayo dito sa ano? Sorry, ini, uh, para medyo kahit paano... Na-recall nyo yung content stat nyo. Okay. Uh, ito yung p-value natin, andi dito siya. No? Negative 3.695. So, sabihin natin ito yun. Negative 3.7. Pero ang critical value natin, guys, is 1.96. So, positive 1.96. At saka negative 1.96. Okay, negative 1.96. Okay, so if your T stat, guys, is greater than 1.96 or less than negative 1.96, uh, naalala nyo sa stat nyo, guys, yung critical region. Ito. So this is your rejection region, di ba? So any value of your T that's greater than 1.96 or less than 1.96. Nasa rejection region yan. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis there that your your parameter is equal to zero. So kunyari ito, ang null hypothesis natin dito is beta null is equal to zero. Okay. What's our T stat? Negative 3.659. Okay. So andi dito yun, ito. Ano ba yung t-critical natin? Negative 1.96. Negative 1.96. So yung negative 3.6, guys, andi dito to the left. And it's within the critical region. So remember, guys, itong critical region na to, rejection region yan. So we reject the null hypothesis that your beta null is equal to zero. Kaya nga significant siya. Okay, there's another way to compute for the probability. Here we're just looking at the uh, kung significant o hindi. So ito guys, 6.592 greater than 1.96, significant yan. Itong 1.345, 1.345 is to the left of 1.96, andi dito siya. Okay, 1.3. So wala siya sa critical region, so therefore we fail to reject. Kaya nga hindi siya significant. Ganon din tong negative 1.556. Greater than negative 1.96 yan. So we fail to reject this. Kaya, kaya nga hindi siya significant. Okay? Alright. Just, just a little review of stat yan guys. No? So clear ba so far? Or masyado mabilis yung pag-explain ko? Uh, review lang actually yan ng ano. No? Pinakita lang natin kung paano i-compute sa R yung yung critical value tapos ito magiging basis ng comparison natin sa p-value. Ibig sabihin guys kahit wala tong p-value, malalaman natin kung kung ano to, kung 
uh, if it's in the critical region, pag nasa critical region siya, reject natin yung null hypothesis natin. Pag wala sa, sa critical region, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Ang null hypothesis natin, itong mga to are all equal to zero. Clear ko muna. Okay, I hope clear siya guys, no? Okay, so let's let's now go guys to our stepwise regression. What is stepwise regression? Okay, ang candidate guys sa stepwise regression is we're going to remove, no? Kasi backward tayo, mag, magtatanggal tayo. So hanapin nyo guys yung pinaka maliit na t-value, absolute. No? Absolute. So disregard the, you know, disregard the signs. Eh, hanapin nyo yung pinakamaliit na t-value. Kasi siya, siya yung same pinaka same pinaka hindi significant. No? Okay? So sino dito guys yung pinaka uh, maliit na t-value? The p-stat. Absolute value turns out si number of dependents. Diba? One point. Hindi, meron pa pula. Ah, Ah, ito pala, si Reyes, no? Si Reyes. Okay, guys, uh, take note, ha? sometimes, kunyari, andi dito yung ano, no? Andi dito yung, yung year level, guys, kunyari, level, no? <clears throat> so magkakaroon dito ng level sophomore, level junior, level senior. Okay, and then magkakaroon sila ng mga estimate nila. Now, in that case, guys, Pag merong hindi significant, tas merong significant din, combination ng significant at saka significant dun sa level, college level, then hindi natin pwedeng tanggalin yun. For as long as my, my level na significant, we cannot remove that factor. So ito, yung race white, since iisa lang naman siya guys, uh, iisang level lang naman to, and then it's the lowest T value, 0.257, then this will be the first one to go. So tatanggalin natin yung race guys yung sa next regression natin. Okay? Paano paano din determine? Look at the p values. Yung pinaka minimum absolute value guys ha. Absolute value na minimum. So you disregard the signs. Ito si race guys 0.257 lowest t stat. Therefore, that will be our living L E A V I N G. Papaalisin natin. So if you take a look at this Okay. So dito, sabi natin, creating model 3, the living variable will be race. So let's create now model 3. Model 3 will now be LM, early wage, regress on education, plus experience, tenure, gender, civil status, number of dependents. Wala na ngayon si race. No, no more. Wala na si race. All right. So let's run this. Let's run this now. Okay, so my model 3 na tayo. Okay, and then let me just run the summary. There. Okay. <clears throat> so let's let's uh, take a look at what happened. Okay, so you now have guys our you now have our model number 3, no? So significant pa rin si education, si experience ano pa rin? Significant at 10%. Tenure. Gender. Now, what happened, guys? Si civil status. Significant ba siya sa previous? Ay, hindi. hindi. So, si civil status at saka si number of dependents, pareho sila hindi significant. Hindi pa rin sila significant. Yan. Now, ano, guys, yung ano? Ano yung adjusted R squared natin? 3631, no? 3631, yung adjusted R squared natin dito is 36.19. Okay. So in terms of explanatory power, in terms of uh, the uh, percentage of the variation of the dependent variable that can be explained, mas tumaas yung ano natin. Mas tumaas yung model 3. 36.31 vis a 36.19. Okay. But we don't just use that as a basis for comparing no? yung dalawang model natin. So, let's use now akaiki, di ba? We can use this akaiki and compare. Okay. 
Aki Ike, si uh, Model 2, 2640, si Model 3, 2638. Okay? So in terms of adjusted R squared, mas mataas si Model 3. In terms of Aki Ike, mas maganda si Model 3. Pero ang acid test yan, guys, yung ANOVA. Okay. Question. Null hypothesis natin dito, restricted model. Sino si restricted model? Ang restricted model, guys, you must counting variables. So which is model 3? No? Okay, so dito, ang null hypothesis natin, model 3 is better than model 2 kasi nga, restricted si model, model 3. No? Mas counting variables yan. So let's run this. Okay. So dito guys, <clears throat> uh, of course, sa pag ano ni, ni R, model 1 yung yung restricted kasi walang walang ano dito, walang race, model 2 yung unrestricted. Okay, and what's our p value? What's our prognosis guys? P value is greater than 0 0.05. Therefore, ang analysis natin, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that the restricted model is better than the unrestricted model. So dito lumalabas na mas maganda si model 3. Mas maganda yung restricted, no? Mas maganda yung walang race. Okay? So it it agrees with the adjusted R squared, mas mataas kasi adjusted R squared ni model 3. It agrees with the Akaiki and the ANOVA. Okay? Confirms this, no? that mas maganda si model model number ano model number 3 no no kasi dito inuna natin si model 3 model 2 pwede ba mabaliktad pwede mabaliktad guys okay pwede no pwede inuna nga lang niya ano dito guys ang unrestricted na model natin si model 2 Ito yung tinetest natin. Model 2 in this case is better than model 1. Yung restricted model, eh kahit, na, kahit na pinagpalit pa yan, guys, ng order, no, you will have the same result. Just take note that the one with the lower number of variables is sure of, is the object of your null hypothesis. No? And still, we reject the null hypothesis that the restricted model is better. Questions, guys? Any questions ba? O ako mo tatanong clear so far? Okay, John, thank you for your answer. No? Okay, good. Good. Okay, so since hindi pala significant, guys, patuloy pa tayo. Kaya nga step by step to. No? That's why it's called stepwise. And this is backward. Meron kasi stepwise na forward. Baliktad naman yun. Magsisimula tayo sa blanco and then isa-isa natin ilalagay. Yung blanco ng model, guys, walang variables muna. No? Okay. Parang ano lang yan, parang uh, LM early wage regress on 1. Ibig sabihin, intercept lang. So, sulat ko lang yun. Ha? LM early wage till day 1. Ibig sabihin nito, guys, Intercept lang to, no? And so this is a model uh, on an intercept. No? Okay, data is equal to range. Iran lang natin ito, ha? Pakita ko lang, no? Mod, uh, ano lang, mod uh, XYZ. Parang trial lang siya. Just to show you guys na uh, ito yung ginagamit guys pag ano pag forward no? stepwise na forward so uh, summary natin summary mod x y z so you'll have a model here okay where the only predictor is your intercept yun lang siya okay so sa ganyan ang ginagamit guys ano pag uh, backward uh, stepwise na forward okay mas mahirap yan it's uh, more difficult. All right. So next, guys, ano yung leading variable natin? Again, look at the t stat. Okay, yung pinaka-absolute value ng maliit. Okay, here you can see that 
number of dependents has to grow. Okay? And recall guys na napakaliit ng correlation ito with hourly wage. No? So model number four natin, tatanggalin natin si number of dependents. So going down here. Okay. Model four. What is the living variable number of dependents? <clears throat> Yan. So wala nang, lima na lang to, no? education, experience, tenure, gender, civil status. Wala na si race. Wala na si, ano, wala na si uh, number of dependents. Let's run this. Okay. If we take a look at 36.21, no? adjusted R squared. Bumaba siya ng konti. Kanina 36.31 yata. Tama ba? 36.31 yung model 3. Yeah, 36.31. Okay. So guys, uh, it's not correct to always just uh, base it on adjusted R squared, no? Yung basis. <clears throat> Kasi dito, if we're just going to base it on adjusted R squared, then mas maganda si model number three. Pero let's take a look at this. Tignan nyo guys, no? Kanina si civil status, hindi naman to significant eh. But ito, halos significant na rin, no? 0.05 na. No? Significant at 10% siya. Si experience, <clears throat> Hindi pa rin significant. Just like yung kanina. Kanina significant siya at 10%. Pero ngayon hindi na. No? Uh, that's why guys, it's important to do stepwise regression. Kasi minsan nagbabago kung isa-isa natin tanggalin. Okay, akaiki, model 3, model 4. Take note guys, model 4 natin yung restricted, yung mas konti. So in terms of akaiki, o si, ano, si model 4, yung restricted. <clears throat> In terms of adjusted R squared, mas mataas si model 3. No? Uh, kaya nga hindi lang tayo, hindi lang isip ginagamit natin na parameter to decide. <clears throat> and uh, more important than that, yung ANOVA natin. Model 3, <clears throat> gawin natin yung restricted natin. Model 4, and then model 3. Unahin natin yung restricted. Okay. So restricted natin ito, ano? wala nang race, wala nang number of dependents. Okay. P-value 0.184, therefore we fail to reject the null hypothesis that the uh, restricted model is better than the unrestricted. So mas maganda nga guys si model 4. Si model 4 is the restricted, yung tinanggalan na natin ng number of dependents. So this was statistically shown using the analysis of variance. Okay? So a uh, time na pala guys, no? Time na. So one minute na lang please. Kasi ito, ang natitira guys, dadalawa na lang. Ano? So sino tatanggalin natin dito? Tanggalin si experience. Huh? Tanggalin si experience. So model 5 natin will be, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. Apat na lang. Tinagal na natin si race, tinagal na si number of dependents, tinagal na si experience. So that will be our model 5. Run natin to si model 5. Okay. Now take note guys. No? Si civil status kanina hindi significant, naging significant na siya. Our adjusted R squared is 36.04. Bumaba, no? Bumaba siya. But that's okay, guys. Titignan pa natin yung model. Ano ba natin si model 5 and model 4? Okay, unahin natin si restricted. Although okay lang naman yun kahit magkaiba. Okay, 0 0.118, 1198. Anong, anong conclusion natin? We fail to reject the null hypothesis that the restricted model, the one with the fewer uh, explanatory variables, is better. No? <clears throat> so, mas maganda nga si model 5. And that ends our regression, guys. Kasi, lahat sila significant. Wala nang leading variable. Okay? Alright. Next next week, guys. Ano pala, no? So, independent learning pala next week. So, mag-a-anong mag ako, guys, kasi... Uh, I will have to record, guys, uh, lessons kasi wala ang time time. No? So mag-record ako. Uh, I'm going to see if uh, pwede ko mag 9 o'clock. So if you want to attend, guys, please feel free to attend. Uh, but attendance will not be checked. And then I'm going to post the, you know, the, uh, the recording. Okay? All right. So thank you so much, guys. And uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, pa pa chat naman, guys. May natutunan pa kayo ngayon. Sana may, sana may yes, sana, sana may yes. Uh, okay.
All right, good, good. Thank you so much. Pakireview na lesson natin na. Okay, salamat. Thank you everyone. Okay, sige. So, uh, okay, so you may go guys. Let me stop recording now.